The Fort Irwin Youth Sports and Fitness staff has bolstered its programs through a new initiative, catering to volunteer coaches. Once every quarter, the dedicated staff hosts a volunteer training day on a Saturday, enabling coaches interested in any sport to come in, connect with their peers, and complete all the trainings required of them before a youth sports team is entrusted with their care. These special training day options have been welcomed by busy volunteers with hectic schedules and military obligations who often struggled to find time to complete the trainings on their own during busy work weeks while putting their team season in jeopardy when they were unable to do so. Ever since the addition of these Saturday sessions, Fort Irwin's programs are operating smoother as it has eliminated staff scrambling to get coaches trained at the last minute while also attracting volunteers beyond the normal channels. And parents and young athletes can now take comfort knowing that when they are assigned a team that their coach has options for completing their trainings in advance of the season. Plus, the staff has seen another wonderful benefit since the inception of the training days. More coaches have been stepping up to volunteer, knowing that a day has been set aside to prepare them for their responsibilities. Congratulations to Fort Irwin Youth Sports and Fitness, a 2023 Excellence in Youth Sports Award winner. Oh, yeah, so the initiative is um, choosing a, a day, a one day training day for our coaches. Um, there is a process that they got to go through to become a coach is our background checks and then trainings. And for us, the trainings has been hard to get our coaches out there because a lot of them work and a lot of them are soldiers. So when we have our trainings throughout the day for our staff, um, for our organization, it's hard for our coaches to get that time off to come. Um, do the training. So the way it came about is our garrison commander at the time. Um, he's been a, like a, a big force pushing our sports and trying to help recruit co coaches for us. And so he, um, you know, inquired about maybe having a day where we just do a training and have all of our coaches who's um, interested in coaching and then the um, current ones who need to renew their trainings to have them come out in, on that day and do um, get that knock out all their trainings out the way. So at least um, that's the one big portion of their requirements they get um, completed. Yes, yeah, pretty much there's with the background check portion is just that they have to do their fingerprints. So our fingerprint office aren't open on, um, on Saturdays, but they do have the packet where they can um, on during the weekday, get, go get their fingerprints, bring us that packet, and then we submit it up. Um, for our background checks, it does take a little bit for it to come back for it to be cleared. But why they got that done and completed their trainings, once the background checks comes back, we can mark them off that they're good to go. And then when season roll around, they're good to get on out there with the kids. Oh, yeah. So it's so far, it's been going um, positive turnout. It's been doing great for us. Our first two um Training days that we had was we had a good turnout, maybe like 15 to 12 coaches. Um, a lot of our coaches, the ones that are still here, the ones that haven't moved yet, we've been retaining them. Um, we have our core group that pretty much coach every season that we uh, offer to the community. And um, yeah, our coaches, we're, we're keeping them and we still get um, throughout the season. We still get people inquiring about it. Um, we have our training days, a list of our schedule where we have like, at least once a quarter or once um, once a month that we'll have the training. So it gives them opportunity to get in there for those that are interested. Yes, and that's what we do encourage because uh, sometimes what here for us, it, what happens is that our, they, a sport comes up and we're about to start and then they're interested in coaching, but sometimes um, it's kind of too late to get them trained all in one day. So we encourage them to do it in advance. So when the sport that they want to coach comes up, they're good to go. Yeah, so pulling it off, we didn't have too much um, challenges because um, our leadership was out on board. We just had to get our trainers, um, reach out to our trainers or, um, that does our trainings for us. So we do bloodborne pathogens, first aid, CPR, um, child abuse and positive guidance and then fire and safety. 
So our CYS trainers, they um, take care of the bloodborne pathogens and the CPR first aid training for us. So they was on board, was able to get reach out to our um, family advocacy program um, department where they do our child abuse and um, positive guidance training for us. And then our garrison safety office, their staff, they um, was kind enough. All of these um, individuals were kind enough to um, be on board with us to uh, help us um, make this happen. And, but I will say the one challenge that we probably did have is just um, getting the coaches and the volunteers to register in advance because we don't want to waste um, no one's time. So if we don't have folks, you know, register in advance, it's kind of hard to know who's going to show up or not. Um, our trainers and our instructors that we have that comes out, they don't work on Saturdays. So they, you know, move their schedule around to work with us. So we will try to be mindful of that. So, but so far, we haven't had really any much struggles to getting it started because we already had the support from the get-go. Oh, yes. Well, getting the coaches. I know this past season that we had, um, it's probably been the first time since, I will say, spring of this year that we didn't have to pick up a team to coach. We had a, um, a whole a lot of coaches and then even our head coaches was able to get uh, assistant coaches to help out. Usually it's just the head, head coach and that's it. So that um, that's always a plus in, in my eyes when we don't have to get out there and coach because it helps us to be able to roam around and help and assist as needed, answer questions if need be. And then we also was able to clear off our wait list as well because we had enough coaches um, for our season. So My first one would be having a supportive team like my staff. We um, pretty much share the same goals and vision for our program. Um, we do what it takes to uh, make sure our program happens. So having a good supportive team and then staff that also bring um, great ideas and then allowing them to take ownership of those ideas and implementing them. Um, a second one is something that carried us uh, for a while or a long time has been um, are having a backup plan to your backup plan to your backup plan. Pretty much your A through Z backup plans. Sometimes in this in this field, things don't um, pan out how you want it to be or work out. So just, or you getting, you know, let's modify it here and there. So just being able to adjust and be flexible and still at the end of the day, make your program work. And then also the coaches, we rely on, for us, we, we rely on our coaches to, um, help our seasons, make our season happen. If we don't have coaches, we really, it's hard to be out there coaching hundreds of kids if you don't have the help out there. So um, I would say those for us, for our program, it's been working for us and we've gotten this far. So we're gonna keep on trucking and adding on as need, as need be.